Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night. Hope you're all doing well. It's good to see you all. And good to be here. So um, tonight is going to be pretty much completely dedicated to questions and answers because I don't have anything really to say. Uh, I've been flying this a bunch using the Air 3 a lot. It's a great drone. My Mavic 3 Air 3 comparison will be coming tomorrow. And then um, the, like my settings and setup will be coming shortly after that and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, yeah, bud, it's it's getting to feel like fall up here. It's, it's cooling down a lot. So yeah. I was in Vegas a few days ago working and the temps were 115, 116, 117. It was hot. But the good news is the drone uh, handled it. The, the, we didn't. We, we kept our flights a little shorter, but uh, but yeah. So uh, okay, if you're first time here for this live stream, the whole reason I do this is to have more of a conversation, to be able to answer questions. Because I don't see once I answer a question in the comments, I don't see anything after that. So if you have burning questions about whatever camera gear, sound gear techniques, drones, all of that. That's what this is for, for us to be able to actually communicate about it and have a conversation about it. And, uh, yeah. So if you want to uh, ask questions, ask away in the chat. I'll do my best to answer them. And there's a lot of other really smart people in the chat too that can probably help answer as well. And we'll kick this thing off. So I know uh, Ann Bredner, Bud Bieber, Tom Zimmer, Drone Shots, Fly Zone FPV, Dirt Road Drones, Jim Mundy, Jimmy J, nice. Lynn Smith, I haven't seen you. Robert Schwimmer, Ryan Sloan, you're terrible. Sorry to hear that. Uh, but it's a dry heat there. You know what? I I'm sorry. After a hundred, a dry heat or wet heat, it, it it's just hot. And uh, a wet heat feels hot faster faster for sure. A humid heat, but a dry heat only you can only use that term I think until about a hundred degrees, and then it's just very 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 hot. USA Drone Flyer, hey, hey, Johnny Curtis. Did we get a waiver to fly near the Strip? No, uh, not for that. Well, no, actually, yes, we did. Because a couple of locations we had to, we had to film were down, uh, not in the Strip or like over the Strip, because there's way too many people down there, but like near the Strat and some other areas like that. So we did have waivers for that and a couple other locations that were all inside of the Harry Reid International Airport space. And um, so, yeah. Bud Beaver, do you or do you not buy the Air 3? What are you flying right now, Bud? I'm trying to remember, because uh, I could answer, probably answer questions for you on that. If you haven't seen my other comparison videos already. Um, Let's see. And Jimmy J agreed. I mean, I, I, anything over 100 is, it's just hot and it doesn't matter uh, at that point. It's just miserable and hot. Mark H, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. Hope you're doing well, man. Air 2S Pro 3 Classic. Uh, Bud, I don't. Oh, 2 Pro and 3 Classic. Oh. Uh, I mean, maybe, but honestly, like, well, you'll see my comparison with the Mavic 3 main camera tomorrow. So the only reason to upgrade is the 7X lens for you, realistically. Uh, you won't notice a huge flight time difference. The waypoints thing is the same. 24 millimeter on the Classic is going to be better. The regular wide camera, 360 obstacle points. It was interesting. I did some active track tests for my comparison between this and the Mavic 3 because I was curious to see which one would do better. Um, this one does better, like pretty significantly better, not in active track, like where, you know, you're just wandering and it's following you in a clear open area. But when you move behind something, this reacquired me every single time where the Mavic three pro lost me every single time. So the active track on the air three has been significantly improved. I will say that. So. Uh, let's see. You're dreaming about diving those mountains in my intro, <laughs> Ryan Sloan. There's some pretty, pretty awesome mountains. 
I need to go out and because I, 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 it's on my list and I'm sorry, I've just been so backed up um, in putting videos out, but I want to do a, a video about FPV video and like why, when to use FPV video and then when to use drone video, period, I guess. When to use, maybe, maybe it's going to be one video, maybe it's going to be two, but it's going to be like, you know, when to use drone video in videos, telling stories, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. And in that you'll, you'll probably see some more fun stuff like that. So yeah, bud, back to your question. I, I don't know that it's totally worth it, to be honest, um, with what you have. The Air 2S, I still feel like has a little bit better image quality and definitely better photo quality overall. It's just that, that 7X lens that you're missing out on. So, I mean, but if you want to use my affiliate links, then by all means, buy it. Mark H, do I have an Inspire 3? I do not. Um, I have worked with an Inspire 3 quite a bit, actually, and I will have a review coming about the Inspire 3 because it is a really impressive drone. There are some caveats, but it is it is a great, great drone. Um, so I've worked with one now for, I don't know, a month and a half, kind of off and on, um, on some <laughs> on some professional shoots, like for Caterpillar, which was fun. And then also, I got to do a, uh, I got hired to do a shoot for the FF, FAA. I almost said FFA. The FAA. And uh, so that was interesting. That's <laughs> like, good, I'm going to fly drones for the organization, the bureaucracy that uh, all of us love to hate on. So it, it was great. They were super friendly, really nice. Uh, it, it, everything went well. They were super happy with what we did. But that was all with it in Inspire 3. And then I spent a few days up here with an Inspire 3 uh, going all over the place and filming and doing all kinds of stuff. So, um, hey, Skydome. So, Andre, hi. Uh, anyway, so it was it, the, yeah, the Inspire 3, I do have, a, I will have a video coming and a, a review video about it. It is, it's an unbelievably great drone. Uh, the image quality out of it is incredible. The flight controls, like they fixed Pretty much every single thing I hated about the Inspire 2 and more. And then threw in a few things for me to hate on the Inspire 3 as well. Just like, oh, so close. Um, anyway, so anyway, it was, it was, uh, it, it's a really impressive drone. It's not for everybody. The Air 3 or the Mavic 3, like, if you do... I mean, honestly, a lot of commercial stuff could be done with the Air 3 and the Mavic 3 for sure. I've shot, I don't know, a dozen, 15, 20 uh, TV shows with the Mavic 3. I've shot three movies with the Mavic 3. Um, not like big name movies, but like movie movies. And, uh, oh, thanks, Fly Zone. Um, and other stuff. I, I mean... Tons of commercial gigs for Caterpillar, for Bell Helicopters, for uh, Disney. I did some stuff for Disney, BBC. I've done some Netflix stuff with the Mavic 3. Um, like I've done a lot of stuff with the Mavic 3. It's an incredibly capable drone. So the Inspire 3, though, is it's a big step up. And it's also a very expensive step up. You know, It's four times the cost. So Bob Casey? Yes, it is. In fact... I got to test night mode when I was in Vegas because we, you know, it was, it's dark there. Like we're starting to get darkness up here, but it's still, it takes a long time for it to get dark, dark. And uh, so I got to test the Mavic 3 and the Air 3 uh, night mode together. And um, we went out in the desert and shot some at sunset. Wait till you see this footage tomorrow. Like the footage and photos tomorrow is just, oh, it's awesome. Um... Okay, yeah, so that, 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 that. Okay, let's see. Hope, hope I got a free pass pass for that, Ryan Sloan. I assume you're talking about the uh, the FAA thing. Um, <laughs> I didn't have issues. Get, well, we were in the middle of nowhere, so there were no clearances to worry about. But we did have, like, it was me, it was the camera operator, Colin, and then a visual observer to, to keep eyes on the drone. And, um, yeah, we, we played it safe. I don't know, played it safe is the right word, but we, you know... We were we were good drone operators. I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, we flew pretty did pretty much what we would normally do, just with maybe a little bit extra thought of you know, a little bit of that stuff. So, 
Um, let's see. Uh, early morning because of the heat. Fly, everyone fly safe. Thanks. You're welcome, bud. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Johnny Drone Flyer. Let's see. Uh, Skydome, you still use your original Mavic Air 1 update, but you do not fly enough. Yeah, I mean, if you don't fly a lot, there's no reason to upgrade. Um, the only reason, I mean, well, two reasons I got this. It is smaller, and with a few extra batteries and the extra flight time, like, it makes a difference for me packing this in the mountains and, um, you know, doing that sort of stuff. It is a super capable drone, and it, it does an incredible job. Spoiler alert, the image quality out of the Mavic 3 main camera is better, which it should be. Um, but yeah, it's it's really, really shocking. So, and then the, a big reason I got it was YouTube. I, you know, put videos about it on YouTube. So that's a big, big reason. Um, don't be scummy at the thumb. <laughs> Thanks, Flight Zone. Uh, FAA, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It, they, we were, uh, we're updating one of their, they're updating one of their safety videos. And so we, we were the drone crew for that safety video. And it was really fun. We got to, uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. Johnny Drone Flyer, what type of, what kind of battery time do I get in the Air 3? So I've been getting, uh, like, well, it depends on how I fly. If I fly like a, a crazy person with sport mode all the time, which I generally do, then I get, you know, 32 minutes, 33 minutes. If I'm gentler and I'm flying more cautiously and there's not a lot of wind, then ugh, like 38 minutes. I mean, I think I even pushed it right. I pushed it right to the very end. And I, th I think I got close to 40 minutes one time, which is insane um, and awesome. Like, it's great. So DD Aerial Photography coming. Uh, I can't promise they'll be here this week, but I think next week for sure. Like, so I, I've just about got all of the back end connected website stuff. And so, um, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's this, this close. So, and I'll also probably, since I'm halfway there, um, I'll also be doing air three LUTs as well. And, uh, yeah. And then, um, part of my goal for the rest of this year and, uh, into next year is to start putting together some pretty serious courses uh, I mean, there'll be paid courses, but, um, for drone videography and photography, like everything I've learned about it, everything I know about it. And, um, and even some of the like business side of it. And then, uh, probably do some more general, like camera, video, filming, audio, those kind of courses. So I do have a question though on that. And, and maybe most of you aren't interested. That's fine. But you can let me know what you would what you would do anyway in the... Uh, oh, I, these are really cool. I got these things. Uh, i got to get this in front of my face. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, these, oh, well. They're stickers you put on here and label everything. And it's really nice. I finally got some. Um, hey, Kyle Watts. So the question is, would you... <laughs> would you rather <laughs> it sounds like bad start to a game uh would you rather do something that was like you know i don't know fifty dollars a month thirty dollars a month i i don't know where i would price it yet and then you basically get access to everything as i build it um and and also included in that would be uh like a no, for fifty dollars a month would probably be too low. It'd have to be higher to do uh, like weekly, but like a, a more like dedicated like live stream where it's just you know really specifically honing in on some of this stuff. Or would you rather just be like, no, I'll wait till rather wait till the course is done, the courses are done, and then just buy whichever modules you want, sort of thing. Um, you know. So anyway, let me know. Uh, and actually Flyzone, thank you for throwing the Patreon in there. So I'm going to be changing the member, the membership here on the channel and the Patreon because I am doing a terrible job of keeping up with what I promised you as far as behind the scenes stuff. And it's purely just because I've had no time to do anything extra. Even like while I'm going to film, the weather has been such that, um, 
Like it's, it's a challenge for me to get to the place I need to go to film the stuff I need to film and then get out before the weather turns really sour. So I'm going to be making changes to that. Um, just like, yeah. Anyway, I haven't decided what, what or how or where I'm going to go with it yet, but, um, but yeah. But for those of you that have been patrons and, or members of the channel, I, I want you to know that I, I really do appreciate it. It's, it's it's uh it means a lot to me that you would do that um so yeah anyway okay i know i saw a question in here awesome news dnd ariel yeah i've been working on it hard and i'm really like because all the stuff i've been shooting lately uh, has been graded with those luts and the more i use them the more i i really actually like them um like it's it's uh it's yeah it's nice so I am, <laughs> it's nerve wracking putting something like that out there. I, I'm pretty happy. I'm very happy with where they are. So yeah. Uh, Kyle Watts, what'd you miss? Not a lot. We've been talking a little bit about the era three and other miscellaneous stuff. Um, oh, Doug, thank you for joining Patreon. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right, V asked, is it worth it to buy an RC2 pad? What's an RC2 pad? The remote? Oh, the, hold on. Hold that thought. Um, I assume you're talking about this guy here, the RC2, right? Now let's see if it'll refocus on my face. No, you get a good un, there we go, an un uh, blurry view of the the back here um i assume you're talking about this the rc the dji rc2 um it is it is uh i don't know i mean I, I go back and forth the i love it because i don't have to put my phone in here and my phone your, your phone either gets too hot and shuts down in heat or it gets too cold and shuts down in the cold for me this does a much better job overall the rc pro does uh, this does, like I use this in Vegas a bunch at 115 degrees and it did great because it has a fan in there and it did, it, it's brilliant. It's still only, yeah, Brisbane's, you're right. It's still only 700 nits, but, um, but the convenience, the amount of times that I, I pull this out of my backpack, turn it on, turn the drone on, fly, turn it off, put it back in my backpack without taking my phone in or out and, and not getting interrupted by notifications or anything else like that has been... Like, I love this. I don't know that everybody needs it exactly, um, but it's, yeah, I like it a lot. I do hope that they make the Air 3 and the RC Pro compatible. I would really like them to make that compatible. Mark H, do I use my Triple Tech 8 Pro? Wait, do I have an 8 Pro or an 8? <laughs> Is that that tell you? Does that answer your question? I don't use it very often since switching to these. Before that, I did use it a lot. Um, so, yeah. But I just, I like the form factor and not having to plug stuff in or pull anything out. It just, for me, just being able to pull it out, turn it on as I pull it out of my bag, and then turn the drone on and, uh, and let it get going is great. Now, um, the RC Pro is, you know, 1,000 nits. The, this is 700 nits. So is it the RC Pro brighter? Yes. This is a little dim in bright sunlight. It is uh, sometimes. So I have to, like, shade it or shadow it somehow to be able to see easily. They make things that you can, like, clip on and, and have a little sunshade for them. So, but uh, I really like it. Plus, you get these extra controls, the camera button, the... Um, video record button and then the two dials so now on the air three like this i controlled on the mavic three the second dial i controlled the aperture all the time so on this i i think it's still set to zoom and that's fine uh you could set it to iso or shutter speed or stuff like that too there's there's options there and that that my my whole video about like the setup and settings is coming soon so I'm kind of surprised this is still holding together. I've had this out in some pretty rough weather, like some pretty heavy rain, and it's it's still doing great. So yeah, 
So I like this. I don't know that everybody was, but for me, it's worth it because not having to pull my phone out and stick it in here every single time is worth it. And not having to worry about my phone getting too hot in the sun and dimming the screen so that it, like, it dims it way down. This stays full brightness. Had no issues with it in Vegas. Um, and then in the cold, not having the, the phone battery die like that, which it does, uh, it just it's just significantly better for me. And so, yeah. Jimmy J, you have no beef with my member member only content frequency. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And maybe, I mean, I don't know. There's some stuff coming up that I think I might be able to do, like just some special member only stuff. And I'm thinking maybe that's what I'll change it to is just going like I'll, I'll do, you know, uh, one special video for the members only a month or something like that. I'm not I'm not exactly sure, but um, yeah. Brizwoods, you're of it's you're of the belief they'll make the RC Pro compatible with the Air Three. Be rude if they didn't agreed uh, agreed 100. percent And I think uh, I was watching Mads Tech, and I think he thinks it's possible, although there is some hardware differences. Um, so, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, 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 no. But I think they can do it. Do I think the Mini 4 Pro will come out this year? Drone, Sky Dome, Sky Dome. Um, I think it will. I think they'll probably do it in October or November is my guess. Usually that's when they release it, kind of toward the end of the year. And it releases, you know, in time for Christmas sales. Um, I, I don't know. They, uh, as far as I know, like they're, they're, they don't, I know they know ex I exist. I know they know I exist, but I don't know that they're going to send me one and I don't, you know, whatever. Um, I'll buy one and I'll do a review on it and comparisons on it and stuff like that. It'd be interesting to see what they could, they can improve over the, the mini three pro. Um, so, but yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, you love your RC Pro, uh, Bruce was me too. I the RC Pro is great. That is one thing that's interesting. From the DJRC to the RC2, this has shorter battery life. It clearly has a fan, and it's clearly doing more electronics with the four antennas because the battery life is shorter. It's still not as short as the RC Pro is, but it's definitely not as long as the DJI RC was. So that was interesting to me. Look, Mama Drone, uh, $20 for next trap. Yeah. Brizwiz, so what's with the Air 3 having non-adjustable aperture? It's They've never had an adjustable aperture in the Air 3, but really, like, if you look at the size, like, there's not a lot of space in there. And so, um, mechanically, I think it would be difficult to, to make that work, uh, period. I was hoping they would, but... Also, I don't think they will because I think they want to keep the Mavic line separate from the airline. And like, you know, if you're working in more professional environments, having adjustable aperture is kind of a must. So that that's kind of what it makes sense to me. So Skydome, looking forward to my thoughts on it when it comes out the Mini 4. Yeah, I, um, yeah. Maybe I'll do a, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a giveaway or something. Because I've, I've come to the conclusion that while I love the mini series for the size and weight, uh, especially backpacking, it is not powerful enough to handle the winds. Case in point today where I was, like the wind was supposed to be four miles an hour. It was 15 to 20 miles an hour. Um, and it, the even the air, no, the air wasn't struggling to handle the wind. That's not an issue. It's it's keeping a steady shot in wind that strong. And the mini three pro just can't do it it's very difficult so that's that's I, i've just come to the conclusion like the mini series just doesn't work for me so but but i will i am definitely going to buy one and do reviews and comparisons on it for sure alaska living do i also recommend purchasing the extra bundle or just buying extra batteries and a different case oh oh yeah 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 uh, look, Mama Drone, yeah, that is an insane zoom on the thermal drone, that's for sure. Um, let's see, the, uh, I mean, I bought the Fly More Combo with the Air 3 because it, uh, but the Mavic series, I wouldn't buy the Fly More Combo, I would just get the drone and the extra batteries. 
Um, hey, Flight Path. Nice to see you, Aldrin. Hope you're doing well, too, man. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't... But the Air 3, the Fly More Combo is definitely worth it because then you get the, you know, those extra batteries and stuff like that. Actually, I don't... Jeez, it hasn't been that long since I've had it. But I can't remember what comes with the Air 3. Yeah, the Fly More Combo. It doesn't come with a case or anything like that, but it does... Uh, yeah, it just comes with the extra accessories. So, oh no, it does come with a bag. Oh, I forgot. Okay, well, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, that's that's what I do, uh, and I I like it that way. I I just yeah, I get the fly more combos usually because it's harder to get them separate early on. But if you're gonna wait a bit, then just get the drone and extra batteries. I think you'll be fine. And then the second question you had, Alaska Living, was buying filters. Yes, absolutely get filters. My filters, because I can't find any filters for this in stock yet, and I've ordered some from Freewell, and I've ordered some from DJI, and I've ordered some from B&H. Basically, whoever gets them to me first wins. Um, anyway, so I've been using sheets of ND film and just stacking two sheets of 0.9 ND film in here under under this to get to get close to proper exposure it's roughly about an nd64 i will say though freewell is coming out with split filters which are going to be crucial for this drone so because this is f2.8 for on the 7x and or uh, the 3x and f1.7 on the main camera the 24 millimeter camera the split filters basically it's double strength which is almost exactly what it should be so up here it would be like ND64, here it would be ND128, or, you know, ND8 and ND16, which is going to be perfect for the two cameras and mixing and matching um, the exposure and keeping the exposure consistent between the two. So I've ordered those, and regardless, like, those are probably going to be the filters I'm going to use, uh, but I do have, like, a set of DJI filters on order, and um, so, yeah, we'll see. Chris, A6700 review, please, and thoughts. Okay, Chris. I I hadn't thought about it, um, but I'll I'll send an email and I'll um, I'll see if I can get one on my hands on one to review. So I I just I I did mess with the FX30 and I'm working on a review of that, and uh, so similar, but but also different. Um, but yeah, I I was impressed with the image quality coming out of the FX30. It's it's really nice for a little APS-C camera. It's it's really really nice. Dawn, the charging station for the Air 3. That's an excellent point. The charging station for the Air 3 is the bomb. It is awesome. I've used it so many times. Because like today, I was out uh, kayaking and capturing footage for the uh, Air 3 review, which is going to be more like a mini movie by the time I get done with it. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, and then uh, the Air 3 review... Let's see. So I was doing that, and then I was filming some other stuff. And basically, I've been, I've been burning through all three batteries pretty much any time I go out to fly this thing because I'm flying it a lot. And that charging case is awesome because I'm able to just plug in any USB power delivery, USB-C, and charge all three of them up, and then boom, it's good to go. So I love the charging case. And the whole power transfer thing, I haven't used that yet, mostly because I've been running my batteries down to the last dregs, the last drops anyway. Um, but... I, I, I if I ever get the point where like I definitely will try it because that, that that's a really brilliant move on DJI's part. Uh, let's see. Uh, was you specifically bought the Mavic Three Fly More Combo with the RC Pro so that you could get the bag plus more importantly the ND filters. Yeah, the ND filters is a big thing. I wish I I wish DJI had included ND filters in the Fly More Combo with this. I don't know why they didn't, but. Yeah, Bob Casey, exactly. Um, I don't know what I'm doing here. Clicking on stuff. Anyway, yeah. So, how long does it typically take to charge all three batteries? Uh, 
That's a great question. I've not really timed it. <laughs> I just, I get home, I plug stuff in and like I go have dinner and do other stuff. And then later in the night I come down and everything's charged up. So I don't know. It's a, I don't know, man, uh, hour, hour, uh, hour and a half, two hours, probably. Mm, that's, that's my guess is about two two-ish hours for all three batteries and it depends on how low you run them and and stuff like that too but yeah yeah agreed bob casey mark h anywhere you can sell your mavic 2 pro my site that i like to work with the most is the gear focus uh site and it's um, it's been good for me. I sold my Mavic 2 Pro on it, and I sold I've sold a lot of stuff on it actually. That's where I would go. What drone are you getting, Mark? What drone are you replacing it with? I'm curious. Got 15. I uh, got a lot. The lot with the 15 percent discount. Nice. That's fantastic, Riswiz. Bob Casey used a DJI FPV block tool all night, part of the day. 12 hour brought 112 charge charge them up. Nice. That's awesome. Shelby George, don't worry, you're not holding you up to an exact time. Shelby, what? Did I miss something? How long is it? Oh, oh, all three batteries. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So I, uh, I mean, it's fast and it does a nice job. It's the same thing that they've always had, where it's like you know, it, it, it charges one and then charges the other and then charges the other, which isn't bad. It just, uh, you know. I, I do like it when third-party chargers come out and you can charge all the batteries all at the same time. And the Mavic, the Air 2S and the Air 2 battery charger from Hannah Tori or whatever was awesome because it would charge four batteries all at once in an hour, roughly. Um, which is like, it's, it's fantastic. So let's see, charging, uh, rated power... The charging hub input ready power three batteries in sequence da, 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 da. yeah it doesn't really say um wait what is this charger usb a oh right yeah and i think it might it might also depend uh so it says so it says 60, it's a 60 minute charge. DJI says 60 minute charge time with the DJI 100 watt USB-C power adapter. Um, and I would say that's about right. 60 minutes of battery, you know, but that's also like from empty basically. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, two and a half, three hours, depending. Kofi, what's happening, brother? Uh... It's been fun watching your live streams. I've mean, so I've never been able to catch them live, but I always get to watch them like early in the morning here. And um, yeah, hope you're doing well, man. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Mark, you're thinking about the Inspire Three? That's a it's a beast of a drone, Mark. Like <laughs> quite the investment. But you you would probably especially appreciate the ProRes RAW or the DNG. The Cinnamon DNG on that is. Because you're using the Avid workstation, right? The Avid um, editor, Avid Avid editing suite. Does that work with Cinema DNG? Because, like, that's just mm, it's gonna be it's awesome. Do I ever bother using a lanyard with the RC Pro Brizwiz? No, I don't. I never have, and I don't know why. Actually, that it kind of makes sense to do it because the way I like to, the way I work, and the way I film with drones. But um, but no. The only time I've used a lanyard is with the when I'm working with the Inspire series or Alta series or one of the other bigger bigger drones with the bigger remotes because then I can like rest it and not have to hold the remotes that are larger generally. So Monday or Sunday, nice Kofi. Yeah, <laughs> it was funny. One of your streams, I don't remember which one you were talking about the difficulty. I think it was the one with Brandon, and you were talking about the difficulties of like doing consistently. But also like figuring out what what consistent time is the best for everybody. And dude, when I started doing streams, I was like Friday night and then Saturday night. And then I tried like Sunday at some point. That didn't work at all. And so then I was like back to like Thursday night and Friday night. And then finally I was like, you know what? Wednesday night 
night is the night. I think I ran some polls about it on the channel, and I was like, it, most people are like, Wednesday nights are good. Fridays and Saturdays were terrible because, like, Friday nights, everybody's getting ready to go do weekend stuff, you know? Like, they're they're gone uh, and out. And then Saturdays, everybody's out doing weekend stuff, so nobody was around. And um, anyway... But that's also like, cause you're East Coast time, if I right, cause you're over in Toronto. So for me, I'm four hours behind everybody, and so it, that just really screws stuff up in trying to do things at a, a decent time. You know, for for a lot of people, it it really makes it hard. And uh, yeah, so that's that's why I ended up here Wednesday nights, <laughs> 8 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> just, <laughs> and then I think it is a case of like, build it and they will come. Like, do it consistently, and that's kind of where people will show up. Um, I've been not very consistent about it lately because I work has been nuts. But uh, a trip on Monday? Well, wait, Monday? No. Uh, what am I doing Monday? Nothing. I, well, I'll be here, uh, ish around Alaska anyway. But I did. Uh, I did a. Uh, I just got back from Vegas again. I was down there shooting a TV show and holy crap, it was so hot. Uh, it was so hot, but I did get some awesome footage out in the desert at sunset with uh, sand dunes and stuff with this. And then um, and then we ran over to uh, Valley of Fire State, uh, the Valley of Fire State Park, which is, a f that place is unbelievably cool. I next time I go to Vegas, whether it's like NAB next year or if I get hired for another TV show, show TV show shoot down there, I'm going to get a permit to go into Valley of Fire and fly drones and take video and photos because that, that was really cool. When I do my comparison between these two guys, you'll see some of the footage from Valley of Fire because I did film with these, but um, but you can't do drones down there without a permit. And I didn't have time to get a permit ahead of time. So Mark H. Uh, ProRes. Avid Media Composer uses ProRes. S cool. ProRes RAW on the Inspire 3 is amazing. It It is, is really, really good. Uh, it's the first time I've used ProRes RAW on, a, on anything, pretty much, other than just messing around with it. And it was fantastic. It really, really great on the Inspire 3. Uh, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Did I miss that? Miss that? Um, Air three interesting to do two lens sky dome. It is, and that seventy millimeter comes in super handy. So you'll see a bunch of examples of that on the video coming tomorrow about the Mavic three and Air three. Um, yeah, it's really really good. So let's see. Biz question on shoots where you travel location. How or what do I establish for payment prior to departing for the shoot? What is the typical request for the pay, pay up front? So Jimmy J, the way I handle that business wise is if it's a client I've worked with regularly, like I know them and they, uh, pay their bills on time, then I will, uh, I mean, depending, it depends on the client, but I will even go do the entire shoot and then just bill on the back end for everything. If it's a new client or somebody I haven't worked with much and I or or we've had struggles with them paying on time in the past, then I always get a 50 to 50 percent deposit um, up front to make sure I cover my travel costs and maybe a little bit of my time at least. Uh, there's a couple of clients that I've done like, you know, you, you, I've had them book the travel. Um, I don't recommend doing that ever. <laughs> Don't just don't do that ever. Uh, it, it, it is, it's, it's, yeah, don't do that. Don't do don't do that. Uh, so that's that's typically what I do is it, newer clients, clients that have had issues paying me before, not paying me, but like paying me on time. Then uh, I'll take a deposit, usually fifty percent or or at the very least enough to cover all the travel expenses that I'm going to put out. And then, um, but clients that I work for regularly and that we've got a great working relationship with, then I just, that I'll build them on the back end. Uh, put your drone into a tree on Sunday. I had to wait till Monday to help getting down. Oh, dang, Tento. Sorry to hear that, man. Uh, do I like to fly or, or do FPV drones? Sky drone? I love flying FPV. It's a blast. I haven't done it as often as I'd like lately because the weather has been, eh, but, um, but yeah, I really, really enjoy it. 
it's a lot of fun. And then I built a couple of FPV drones that'll that'll carry like an FX six or Red Komodo or anything like that. Um, for when I've done work for Caterpillar, and who else did I use that one on? I think I used it for Disney, and I used it for um, PBS. And so yeah, I stuck a FX six on there, which is actually really good. I mean, the Komodo is great too on an FPV drone because the global shutter, but the FX six with the variable aperture the electronic uh not aperture the electronic nd filter and well recently red released the update where you could get the gyro data off the komodo and that helped a lot but up until then the the fx6 was the only camera that natively recorded gyro data and you could use it to smooth out the footage after the fact Whew, it's awesome so let's see kofi uh i forgot taking a trip on Monday. oh we talked about that already where's here it's Midnight there, dang, Tasmanian Tiger. Sorry to hear that. Thanks for staying up, though. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, image possible RC Pro can be compatible with the Air 3. I think it is, MHM. I think a lot of us just have to make a bunch of noise about it, and I think then then it will be possible. So, Jake Sloan copying the best photographer. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Brian, he likes flying real helicopters. Gosh, dang it. That's the truth. The... I really, I mean, I've talked about it before, but now I'm like, I, I am making incremental steps toward getting my helicopter pilot license because holy crap, are they fun to fly? <laughs> and just, and the funny thing is every time I work with a helicopter pilot and we go out and, and shoot or whatever we're doing and, and then the occasional times where they're like, you want to take the controls. But every time I talk to them about it, they're like, yeah, you don't do this. You shouldn't get your helicopter. You don't want to do it. It's expensive. And I know all of that. And then they let me take the controls and fly the helicopter for a bit. And then I'm like, yes, yeah, this is not helping at all. So like what, what's going on here? <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, um, I have a couple of flight hours under my belt and that's about it so far. Uh, but yeah. I actually do have a flight, a couple of flight hours. I have a couple of flight hours in a, a turbine helicopter, which is really fun. And then a couple of flight hours in a, um, an R44, a Robinson with a piston helicopter. So the crazy thing is like, because I fly FPV, uh, I was shocked. And I think one of the pilots I worked with was kind of surprised too, of how, how some of the FPV skills and the understanding of how to make the drone move and do what I wanted to do actually do translate to helicopter. Now the controls are different. So you're flying it with very different movements and controls, but it does translate. So that was interesting. Skydome, thank you for the $5. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Skydome, you're welcome. Absolutely. And again, that's the whole point. That's the whole reason I do this stream. Uh, and actually, I, I'm, I'm going to start working on getting some guests in here with me because there's other people with better and more solid expertise on stuff that I, I may not be as good or as solid on, but, um, but that's the whole reason I do this stream is, you know, I answer every comment that comes on the channel for now. Uh, there'll be a day probably where I won't be able to keep up with that. But, um, but once I answer the first time after that, I don't see anything ever again. And so follow up questions, anything like that, I can't get to that. And so this stream, the whole reason for it is this. We can have a conversation. You can ask me questions about whatever, you know, I, we've had conversations about like best first camera, best lens for this, best lens for that, best drone for this, uh, how to do this certain thing with audio, whatever that is. But in this format, we can actually like chat and, and have the back and forth that I can't do in the comments anymore. So that's the whole reason for this stream. And that's why I try and try and be consistent as I can. And for those of you that have been around long enough, you know that I try hard enough to where I have done this stream in the ocean from my kayak while I'm coming back to, <laughs> to get to my car or from up in the mountains hiking around somewhere because I have I, I found a spot with cell signal and so I'll just sit down and do the stream. And one of the helicopter pilots I worked with, uh, she Lee Heli Pilot Lee, uh, she uh, she was even like, "Aren't you supposed to stream tonight?" I was like, "Well, yeah, technically." She's like, "I think I know a place where you can get cell signal, and we can fly there." I was like, "No, no, no, no. That's we're we're good." Because um, we were in the middle of getting some pretty epic stuff. So anyway, yeah. Put you in coach Kofi. Do you want to do that, man? I, I would totally have you on because you're your, your whole, uh, 
expertise and what you bring to the table with the stuff that you do, the projects you work on and stuff, I think we could have a pretty cool, a pretty fun conversation about some of that stuff. And um, yeah, I not that I don't do, I, I mean, I do very, I think we do, I think we do very similar stuff, honestly. I just, on this channel, I've, I've like become more known for my work with drones. So, you know, uh, and it's, I'm fine with that. I love flying drones. It's a lot of fun, but, uh, but yeah, Kofi, if you, we'll set something up. Uh, does this time work for you? Holy crap. It's almost time to go already. Uh, they'll make the RC Pro so it still won't have the OcuSync 4. Yeah, Don, it won't. But the, but if they can get it compatible, here's the thing with OcuSync 4 and the whole like it'll go 20 kilometers compared to uh, OcuSync 3 Plus, which will only go 15 or whatever. At this point, it doesn't matter. You there is you can fly these drones so far beyond your visual line of sight, and then you're illegal. Um, it, it really just doesn't matter anymore. So when maybe we're able to pl fly beyond visual line of sight, and get waivers for stuff like that, then then maybe that'll mean something. But honestly, like 20 kilometers, how are you going to fly this 20 kilometers? The battery life won't get you there and back. Uh, and there's no reason to. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's just no reason to. So uh, for me, I, yeah, I don't, I don't. But the, the place it does make a difference is when you're flying in dense urban environments with lots of other RF signals that are competing for that space in the uh, radio frequency spectrum, that makes a difference. And then when you're flying in like dense trees where trees are blocking the signal and actually trees are very effective at blocking signal, um, that that's where it makes a difference. And actually the biggest people it makes a difference for are, are all of my friends in Europe because your output uh your output from a controller is much more limited power wise um, than what we're limited to here in the U S. So you, and I got to experience that personally this year, beginning of this year, when I was in Portugal doing some work there, it was shocking how much less range the drone had. So yeah, in theory, <laughs> Tentos, that's right. In theory, be quiet, Siri. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Hey, Steve, if you have an FPV, then I need to have someone keep the drone in sight. Eric, yeah, so the FAA, at least in the United States, the FAA has clarified that. And now in order to fly FPV with goggles, you are supposed to have a visual observer who is keeping a line of sight with the drone visually. No aided like, you know, binoculars, anything like that. Um, and then you are supposed to be able to take the goggles off and fly the drone back to you manually if you need to. So, you know, that's, yeah. So I've done it a couple of times where I've done the, uh, done, uh, you know, mountain top, like cruise down flights. And, uh, it's been nice to have people with me, keep an eye on the drone. And then, uh, you realize how quickly those drones disappear into the sky when you're flying a mile off into, <laughs> cruising down a mountain ridge at sunset it's uh, a little terrifying anyway so yeah h4 service if ever used the sdi out on inspire 2 i have we did some uh live stream stuff for uh the pga and then for espn and we use sdi out on the inspire 2 and then oddly enough we did more live stream stuff for espn and um you know so like live stream not live stream i live broadcast is what i mean sorry about that live broadcast stuff for pga espn i think there's another one in there i don't remember who it was and so we used sdi out on the inspire 2 and then oddly enough like the most recent one i did in mississippi uh which is toward the end of last year for espn was just me and another guy with a pair of mavics covering this uh this thing and we HDMI'd out to this little box uh, that we had that converted everything to whatever the the transmission truck needed. So, but yeah, so I've used the SDI out on the Inspire 2 a few times, not a lot, but a few times. Actually, no, that's not true. Every time I've worked for like Caterpillar or um, some of those other like bigger productions, Chicago PD and stuff like that, then we always do SDI out into uh, to get it to video village from there. So 
I can't believe it's almost five already. I don't. I don't feel like the stream has been going that long. Steve Carpenter, good to see you. MHM Photography, you have a trip coming up in November to Kauai. Booked a helicopter tour in Hughes 500. Oh, those are fun helicopters with the doors off. Even better. Good. Everything so far you've said, I approve of, and you're doing great. <laughs> yes, once. They are really fun helicopters. A Hughes 500 is like a... What would I like? It's a Porsche 911, a, a GT, Porsche 911 GT. Like, they are so quick and so agile and just... Now, I, I'm not saying that's how they're going to fly it when you're in the in the thing, but absolutely, you, you absolutely should do that, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Here's a tip. Keep the edge of the lens, uh, the, the outside, the end of the lens, just inside the door, so you don't catch the wind. Otherwise, you'll see lots of vibrations. And then, um, you know, you, you'll you have to play with your shutter speed to kind of find the sweet spot of where it needs to be for uh, getting good, sharp photos because there is a lot of um, vibration happening. Although a 500 is pretty smooth comparatively. The, the less blades you have on a helicopter, the more, not rougher it flies, but the more vibrations you could have depending so yeah doors off absolutely because then you get the best photos you're going to get and um super fun helicopters to fly in so <laughs> i'm a little jealous honestly that's going to be a really really fun thing to do uh you need to team up with becky and chris youtubers about flying helicopter drone stuff i know i i of course their helicopter is going in for the rebuild because robinson's have this thing that every so many hours or every so many years they have to be rebuilt from the ground up uh, so they won't have a helicopter for a bit, but I, I have told them, I'm like, you know, if you ever fancy a trip to Alaska, I will, I will, uh, hang out with you guys and we'll go to some pretty awesome spots. So anyway, uh, a mini pro, a lot of mini pro. Yeah. I mean, I think they're going to release another FPV drone of some sort, but I don't know when exactly it'll be interesting to see what happens in the FPV goggle stays in the FPV <laughs> you guys. What's my favorite shoot I've done? Ooh. Air feet don't fall out. Yeah, you'll be buckled in. You'll be strapped in well. That's for sure. Yep. Agreed. And Brettner. Uh, H4 survey. Any weird weirdness or gotchas when you use the SDI out? Might be doing it soon. What a heads up. No, uh, but don't like... Put the SDI cables, plug them in, and then turn the system on. Don't don't turn the system on and then plug the SDI. There's a small chance that you could short stuff out, and you don't definitely don't want to do that. But uh, but yeah, from what I remember, it's pretty straightforward. Um, from what I remember, it's been a bit honestly. I think it's been about two years since I did the Inspire Two with live stream or uh, live broadcast stuff. Mel Gibson. Oh, really? Interesting. Because I went in the beginning of this year with the Mavic 3. Actually, I think we had two Mavic 3s at that point. And they didn't they didn't shut us down. But, I mean, we were there for a reason. So, thanks, Bob Casey. I, so I'm trying to talk to, I want DJI. Or, or I even, I put it out there to Sony with the AirPeak drone to... I want to do that again, but with a the Inspire 3 or the Air Peak drone with a, you know, A1 on it or something like that. Um, so I don't know if anybody will take me up on the offer, but I would love to. I, I will be shooting a lot of Aurora this year because it's supposed to be a spectacular year. So you'll be seeing more of that coming up on my channel. Uh, da, 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 da. Little bird, little bird for Delta. You've probably flown in those, right, Brian? I I would imagine you have. I would imagine you have a lot. <laughs> and that in UH sixties. Um anyway, let's see. Uh did you well, yeah, you were doing it for a different reason. Totally different. Anyway. Uh let's see. Da, 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 da. Was there an ice cave? 
an ice cave my favorite H4 services? I well there is there is an ice cave down by Valdez that I think is is has been my favorite because the whole ceiling was thin enough but strong enough to go in and it just glowed this deep 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 blue which is awesome. Other than that, if you've never seen the clip of me diving an FPV drone down into an ice cave uh, in the winter time on my Instagram, probably is the easiest place to find it. Uh, that I think was one of my favorite ice caves too. And then all those ice caves don't exist anymore because they're always changing and disappearing and other ones are opening up. So it's always a challenge to like find. I've not been able to find anything locally that I that I can find. Um, the ice cave, like the ice cave that I use, the a7 IV and A7S III Northern Lights video, that one where I was shooting the Northern Lights out of the ice cave. Um, that one has changed dramatically. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see where it lands this winter because I, I like that one quite a bit, but it's different. But I love the ice caves you can get into that just glow blue on the ceiling when the sun's out. It, that is just such a cool experience. Robert, you've seen a Eurocopter... Dolphin. Oh, those are. Yeah, exactly. You should be connected, all harnessed in. Uh, not necessarily seat belted in, but like harnessed in with like a almost like a parachute harness and clipped into the helicopter seat. There's no chance of you coming out. Um. Uh. Pass vacationer. Don't do it. Mini Pro is it? Mel Gibson. That's good to know, man. I um, appreciate you letting us know. See, Derek, you're interested to start a drone video business. Do you think there's still opportunities for newcomers to drone business given the advanced physics technology, lower barrier to entry? I do, Derek. I, I think you do have to work a little harder now to get to kind of get off the ground, but I do think there is. But honestly, like a drone specific business is a pretty hard one. The the places to go for that are probably gonna be like inspections, honestly, if that's all you want to do. But drone and other video photo services together, that's that's really kind of the sweet spot. And that's where I think there's there's still plenty of opportunity to start that, where drone is something that you can do as well as other stuff. So. Which one is that? Oh, that chasing light one. Yeah, that chasing light video, Bob, is one of my favorites. I think that's I think that's probably my favorite video I've ever put out, honestly. That that one you just posted the link to is, I really like that video. Anyway, okay. Wait for the <laughs> Brian. Oh, just oh, I gotta wrap this stream up anyway. So, never seen the Aurora to bucket list thing. So I I don't know why I didn't know this, but the Aurora is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Um. And I totally get it why it is because, and Brian was with me one of the nights uh, that we were out shooting the Aurora. There is nothing that, there's very few things that can make grown men scream, hoop, and holler like little kids uh, and just like almost out of their minds excited about than watching the Aurora. It's really bizarre, but it does. It's It's one of those things that's just, it's so magical and amazing to witness in person. And especially up here where you are so, so close to it that it's insanely vibrant and, um, and just, it's amazing to watch. So anyway, I hope you get to do it. It, it should be a bucket list thing for sure. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Mavic 3 Pro, MHM. Yeah, I honestly, MHM, like if I didn't use the Mavic 3 Pro so much for work stuff and for client stuff, I probably would too. Like this, this is what's going to be in my backpack when I'm going out to do stuff, honestly, unless it's like client related or, or that kind of thing. Um, the Air 3 is really a good drone. Will I head to Australia? Mel, I would love to someday. I really would. I've always wanted to go there. I have lots of friends there. And um, so someday I need to get there. I don't know when. Anyway, fish on, moose down, and the Aurora. Exactly. Bucket list trip, shall we? Well, you know there's a place in Alaska where you guys can see it. Actually, there's lots of places in Alaska where you can see it. And, uh, and pretty... Pretty consistently. And Brettner, yes, I do. I know. I know. I do. I do. I do. 
and uh, I need to come down for the heat and the summer and the bugs and the snakes and everything. There's there are so many times that I've been hiking lately, uh, especially after like going to Vegas again and coming back and going. I'm really glad I live in a place that has no snakes and no poisonous critters that you have to like watch for when you're running around. Cause then I was running around outside in the desert, uh, in the Valley of fire and the red rock and the, the other place we went in the desert. Um, I was like, I gotta re- remember there are snakes here that I need to keep an ear open and an eye out for. So anyway, all right. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up living in BC off axis. The Aurora lights are great. BC has some spectacular places to see the Aurora. I, I agree. Um, yeah. So anyway, okay. I, uh, yeah, I got to wrap this stream up. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for being part of it and appreciate it a lot. I will be here. Wait, will I be here? Cause I do have a work trip coming up to a village here in Alaska next week. Oh, so I may not be able to stream next week cause I will be in a uh, more rural Alaska working so we'll see uh if i can i will but i i doubt it um i've been there before and the internet like there's inter there's internet technically uh but oh but i might have starlink oh that would be cool okay so i might try and stream with starlink out there so we'll see um because the project i'm working on uh, uh, I'm going to be working on a lot and you'll see parts of it, which is cool. Cause they gave me permission to put parts of it on this channel. So, uh, yeah, it's with the state of Alaska and some other stuff. And we're going to be going to a lot of rural areas and especially in the winter. So <laughs> you guys are going to get to see parts of Alaska that few people ever get to see. And, um, yeah, but with Starlink too. So it's going to be pretty cool. And some very cool enterprise class drones from DJI and from other companies. So that'll be, be fun. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So thanks for being here. Thanks for being part of this channel and on the stream tonight, hanging out with me here. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. If I can stream next week, I will, um, from out in Bethel, Alaska, uh, don't count on it, but otherwise I will see you tomorrow in the video that comes with the Mavic three and the air three. And then um, several more consecutive videos after that. So in the meantime, be safe, be smart. I'll see you all again soon in the next video. Cheers, everybody. Uh, uh, uh.